Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day so far. As you can see from the title down below, today's video is 10 products that I regret buying. 10 products that didn't work for me, that I don't find myself reaching for, that don't work for a certain reason. And I will start by saying all of these brands are brands that I love. All of these are good brands. I'm not slating the brands. I'm just slating these specific products because they're not good and I will deep dive into why each product isn't very good. Starting with one that I feel like I've seen a few reviews for this recently and people like it. The Maybelline Instant Age Perfector 4 in 1 Whipped Makeup. Whipped Matte Makeup. Like, did we not leave Dream Matte Mousse in, like, the early noughties for a reason? It's thick. It's very matte, I feel, even on... Like, obviously, I have dry skin, so why I picked this up, I do not know. But even on oily skin, I can't see it working. I can't get over the texture, firstly. <laughs> firstly, I can't get over that. But it's just so strange. It's... It's like airy and there's no pigment to it when you blend it out. So that's what it looks like when you first get it out of the tube. And then you sort of start to blend it in and it just looks really like lumpy and horrible and just not nice. And then you keep blending and you keep blending and it sort of turns into like a cream. And just like side note, this is the lightest shade and it is bright orange. I feel like it's not even showing up that bad on camera. It is bright orange and yeah, you just keep blending and blending and it disappears into like nothing, but it just feels awful and it picks up on every piece of texture that you've ever had on your face. It just, it feels horrible and it never really dries down like I could leave this on my hand forever and although it says it's matte makeup and it has a matte finish it stays this sort of like level of creamy even though it's matte but yeah for me I just can't get over the texture I will probably end up just throwing this away it's one of those products that I have tried multiple times tried under different like powder foundations and on top of different hydrating primers and all sorts of different things and I just can't get it to work. If you love this and if you love any of these products, great. Like I'm happy for you, I'm happy that these are good products for you. For me, it's a no. Another product that I feel like I've heard a lot of people talk about recently and I also have tried multiple different ways and can't get to work, the NYX Brow Glue. This leaves white, crispy, crunchy bits of glue in your eyebrows. No matter how much you like squeeze product off the end of it, you always end up with too much of it in your brows. And now obviously it is a beautiful tiny little spoolie. This is like an actual tube of glue. Like I get all the packaging. I really really like the packaging. I like the the they made it look like a little tube of super glue. I really appreciate that. But the product just leaves all of these white crusty bally horrible dandruffy looking bits in my brows and the hold also isn't really there. I don't need a very strong hold brow gel. My brows generally do what I want them to. My problem is that I just have very fair brow hairs and I can't see my brow hairs. So I prefer something like the e.l.f. Wow Brow that leaves that tint in the brows and also a little bit of hold. This doesn't really give you the hold it makes your brow hairs look like creamy and white and no matter what you put over the top of it whether you go over the top of it with the elf wow brow with more of a tinted brow gel afterwards it always has that creamy thick look to the brow hairs 
and again another one that I've tried a million and one different ways and I can't get to work. One of the most disappointing things that I am mentioning today is this eyeshadow palette. This is the MUA Professional uh, Tropical Oceana eyeshadow palette 20 shades. I had been wanting this for the longest time. I'd seen it for years in Superdrug before I picked it up. I love the colours. I want these colours. This shade here, this like pink purpley shade, it's like a duochrome, it's absolutely beautiful, it looks incredible in the pan. But does it do anything? No, it absolutely does not. Like, I'll swatch it. It comes out, it looks nice on the finger, and then you swatch it and it's like... What is it? It's just, it's just nothing. And I mean, that's like probably the best shade out of this. The mattes barely show up. They're like patchy when you blend them out. They're like not pigmented basically at all. I have a whole video where I'm fairly certain I swatched this. I definitely try and create a look with it and it's a massive fail. And again, it's another one that I've tried to use multiple times since then. And it just, it's just really, really disappointing. And it just goes to show because they don't actually sell this anymore. I have, I have never seen this since I bought it. I've never seen it in Superdrug. The shades are just so like, pale and nothing like there's no pigment to them they're just for the same price you can get a much better eyeshadow palette from like revolution or elf or like beauty bay it's a no for me another product that i picked up and now i can't see online anymore and also has zero pigment to it this is the barium color glide eyeshadow wand. I love a cream eyeshadow. This is in the shade, I don't know, doesn't say. It's a brownie shade but it's just like goes on like that and you think oh, beautiful but as soon as you start blending this out like oh sorry where did you go? Where did you go? And that's like not even blended out yet. Like once you've actually like got that blended out to the point where it's thin enough to actually dry, it's completely gone. There's no pigment to it. Like this could have been so good. Like if that actually, the point is this doesn't dry if you just leave it like when you first apply it, that will not dry that will stay tacky and crease and obviously as you've got it on your eyelid it'll just smudge all over you need to blend it out to get it thin enough to the point where it'll set and then by the time you get it to the point where it's thin enough where it'll set there's no pigment to it and yes you could use it as like an eyeshadow base you could put you know blend it out and then put some sort of like brownie eyeshadows over the top of it you could do that am i going to do that no if i want a cream eyeshadow then i want it to be that pigmented when it dries but you you just you just can't like it will not it will not stay like that it's just you know they don't sell it anymore <laughs> i'm guessing for a reason because it's not very good. Another one from Barry M that I also can't find online anymore, the High Viz Liquid Eyeliner in the blue shade. This had quite a strange name and I can't remember. I've tried to look this up on Superdrug fairly recently and I can't find it. It's still on the Barry M website, I think. This is the most intense blue liquid eyeliner that I've ever seen. Like, it truly is a beautiful, bright blue. And that isn't my problem. The, the product isn't the problem with this one. The applicator is really good. The colour is beautiful. It doesn't transfer. It will dry this colour. It lasts really well all day. My problem with this, if you wear this on your eyes, and even like this little swatch that I've done on my hand, it will stain. The very first time I used this, I did like a huge like graphic eyeliner look and I had to wear that same shape graphic eyeliner. I'll insert a picture if I can find one. I had to wear that shaped eyeliner for like three days afterwards because it stained my eyelids 
so badly that I couldn't get it off no matter what I did and no matter what like eyeshadow base or eyeshadow colour I put on over the top you could still see this blue line through and I'd done like a wing and then it was like round and I regretted that for about a week afterwards it was just it was so bad and thankfully we were in lockdown so it didn't really matter but wouldn't recommend for like graphic looks i do still sometimes use this if i want a blue wing and if i want that shape and that really intense blue i do still use this some of these products i do still use and this is one of them i do still use it i am going to use it up but i have to be prepared to wear a black eyeliner or a brown liquid liner or something for like three or four days afterwards because it just won't come off no matter what base you put down underneath it no matter what base you use for the days afterwards nothing covers it because it's such a strong pigment which obviously makes it a very good eyeliner but because it stains you have to be in the shape of the wing you have to be dedicated to that for the long haul another eyeliner that i have tried a few variants of and this is the worst one that i have tried this is a gel pot eyeliner this one's from revolution specifically this one claimed to be life proof claimed to not smudge to be easy to apply and easy to take off but really long lasting it specifically had life proof in like on the box it came with a silly little brush that I've probably thrown away long ago. It's not life proof, it smudged on me pretty much instantly. I just can't get on board with these pot eyeliners. I am not skilled at eyeliner. I love the look of an eyeliner but something like this I just I can't coordinate like working so quickly with it before it sets and then like <laughs> I don't know I just found it really really hard work and I was hopeful that this would be like easier than trying to use something that's like a pen or you know like the typical like liquid eyeliners I was hopeful that this would be easier but I'm fairly certain that this is all like dried up already and it wasn't even that long ago that I bought this but definitely going in the bin Another one from Revolution, and I'm sort of on the fence about this. This is the Revolution Cheeky Blush Shot. This is in the shade Pink. You have to like shake this up and get the product up into the little sponge thing in here. My problem is I find that if I have like a full face of foundation on and I go in with this, with the actual sponge tip and put this on my face it picks up the foundation you can't blend it out quick enough where it doesn't leave like these pink marks all over your face i also find that the color is really like wishy-washy it's just sort of nothing like if i'm going for a blush i want something more than that i just i find it really hard to work with i wish that they had done because some of these are in really beautiful colors i wish they had done these colors but in the super dewy like squeezy tubes that the super dewy liquid blushes are in i feel like this is quite gimmicky i feel like it's not really fit for purpose in that the applicator doesn't really work how it should and again like once you've applied that that'll stay wet until you blend it out and then once you blend it out it's like completely gone and I'm a girl that likes a lot of blush so it's just it's just not good I feel like I've got a lot of revolution here and revolution is probably one of my favorite brands so like I'm not coming for revolution but these just aren't great products this is the matte bomb liquid lip and if you remember like Colourpop liquid lipsticks from like 10 years ago then this is the feeling of that it's so drying like the smell of these is awful it actually makes me feel quite poorly it's like sweet but like 
I don't know, there's just something about it that makes me feel really, really poorly. The colour is beautiful. The finish of it is so chunky and bitty on your lips. I just, I can't get over the feeling of these no matter what, like lip balm or lip treatment or anything that I put on underneath. This just ends up feeling so dry and so bitty and chunky on the lips no matter like how tiny of an amount you apply you can just like tap tap a tiny little bit this is another one that i've tried to, like seven million different ways you can tap the tiniest little bit over or you can really layer it up no matter what you do it ends up drying down into this chunky sort of sandy chalky feeling on your lips and it just feels horrific the colours are beautiful, they're really affordable. If you want a matte liquid lipstick, the Revolution Pro Hydra Matte Liquid Lipsticks are fantastic, so much better than these. In fact, let me show you one. This is quite a similar shade actually. This is the Hydra Matte Liquid Lipstick in Cream Syrup. These dry down the same, they feel so much nicer. They feel really hydrating. So that's the Hydra Matte one and that's the Matte Bomb or whatever it was called. What was it called? Yeah, Matte Bomb. It's just, it's just not cute. It's just not a good look having the driest of Sahara deserts on your lips. And I've got another one here that's not good, but different brand. This is the L'Oreal Ultra Matte Liquid Lipstick and it's Les Chocolat didn't do very well in French, funnily enough. Again, this has an awful scent. Like it's meant to be chocolate, fairly certain it's meant to be chocolate, hence the name, but oh, it's just awful. Firstly, the this is in the shade Dose of Cocoa 848. Firstly, this little applicator, the grabby bit of the applicator, like it's not big enough. It's very it feels very awkward in your hand and then the actual applicator the actual tip of it is the same as the l'oreal signature rouge signature liquid lipsticks that i am obsessed with it's the same as that so i should like this however it has the same awful dry down as that l'oreal one picks up on every single little bit of texture that you have ever had on your lips so that's that one there the shade is also just a little bit too gray just a little bit she's maybe started dying like it's just not a really flattering color i don't know maybe on some people it would be maybe with a certain look it would be however it just felt so awful on the lips i like a matte lipstick okay i like a matte finish. I'm not slating matte lipsticks because there are so many out there that I really really enjoy but these two just dry out the lips. Nobody needs that. Everybody wants a hydrated feeling but with the long lastingness of a matte lipstick and those two just aren't those two just aren't it. And then the last product that I have here is another one that I do use, is another one that I have fairly certain I've mentioned on my channel before. This is the Sleek Blush in 926 Rose Gold and the colour I'm not offended by. The colour is really really pretty. However, let me try and show you this close up. It has so much chunky glitter in it. It's just too much for the face, too much for on like this area of your face. Again, it picks up on every single little bit of texture. I do like this and I do use this as an eyeshadow. Obviously, it's going to take me forever to get through this whole pan as an eyeshadow, but that's literally the only way that I would ever use it. Let me like blend this out and show you. It is pretty, it's here. It's pretty as an eyeshadow, but it is just too reflective for a blush. 
if you had a deeper skin tone then this probably would work as a nice like pinky toned highlight but on me <laughs> I am Casper the Ghost it's just it's not a flattering shade it's not a shade that I can use as a blush but as an eyeshadow and like an eyeshadow topper it is really really pretty so that is my 10 products that I regret buying like I say love these brands Revolution, L'Oreal, Barry M, NYX some of my absolute favourite brands so many great products from them these are just misses let me know are any of these like your favourites do you love any of these have you tried the NYX brow glue like do you get on with it am I just not doing something right let me know but that is all for today. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. But until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye.